so good afternoon. I had intended to say good morning, but we're a little bit behind schedule, so I apologize, and if you need to leave to get to places like the opera this afternoon, I understand that. So, welcome to the annual meeting of the Birmingham Unitarian Church. As we gather here today to consider both where we are as a beloved community and where we are headed into the future, the news we will be hearing is good news. Yay! <laughs> we are eager to involve the entire congregation, both members and friends, in the ongoing process of discerning and determining our future. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, I call this meeting to order. Let us begin by affirming the Congregational Covenant together. It's up on the wall. As part of this love and easy community, I promise to strive to be my best self in all my interactions, assume the best intentions of everyone's actions, be mindful of our shared humanity in my communications, pause, reflect, and be part of the solution when things go awry. Thus do we covenant with one another. And as a symbol of our covenant with one another and with Unitarians across the globe, I'll light the chalice for this meeting. Will those of you who are members and have signed the book prior to February 19th, 2014, please raise your hands and keep them raised until we can count those present in the meeting. Go on, that's all right. Okay. Okay, we have a quorum present. <laughs> Thank you. Copies of the minutes from the last annual meeting on December 8, 2013 were available on the table as you entered the sanctuary. Are there any corrections to those minutes? If not, do I hear a motion to accept the minutes as submitted? So moved. Okay. All those, um, a second. Okay. okay. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay, the minutes are approved as submitted. Uh, let me now introduce Craig Straup, who will give the report from the LDC. Thank you. So, uh, as all of you know, I would think, uh, at our annual meeting in December, we uh, approved shifting the church fiscal year from a calendar year to a... Oh, yes, I will. I'm sorry about that. At our annual meeting in December, we approved changing from a calendar year, church year, um, to a fiscal year starting July 1, ending June 30. And as part of this fiscal year transition, um, we created, the Board of Trustees created an 18 month year that runs from um, the beginning of 14 through June of 15. Uh, as well, the Stewardship Committee asked members and friends to make an 18-month pledge commitment, and the LDC has followed the congregation's lead in this transition process, and we have asked existing church leaders whose terms would expire at the end of calendar year 2014 to go to the end of the new church fiscal year, July of 15. Currently, the by, uh, Constitution and bylaws state that elected terms begin on January 1st, but um, you know, as I said, we, we asked to extend these terms um, from the normal 12 month for an additional six months so that leadership can focus their energy on the upcoming capital campaign and leadership development training instead of trying to do an additional cycle at the end of the year and then six months later have to do another cycle. So we approached all of the existing leaders whose names I'll read in a moment um, and they have all agreed to extend their term the additional six months. 
<clears throat> so the members of the LDC recommend that we um, approve extending the terms of the Board of Trustees, Program Council, and Leadership Development Committee that would normally expire in December um, to extend until June 30th of 2015 for the following leaders. President Lisa Damian, Vice President Barbara Wolf, Secretary Marilyn Mast, Treasurer Dick Cantley, Trustee David Graham, Trustee John Hammer, Program Council um, Fellowship Carol Lee, Green Sanctuary Karen Stanky, uh, Membership Bette Bergeron, Music Ed Sharples, Service and Justice Mary Jo Ebert and Sharon Kirchner, Worship Penny Hackett Evans, and on the LDC, Kathy Arnold, myself, Annette Sargent, and Sheila Siever. So at this time, um, if you would um, give me a, a yay or nay, all those in favor of extending these terms, accepting this, uh, please say aye. Aye. And opposed, say nay. And thank you. On behalf of all the appointed and affirmed leaders in this congregation, I thank you for your confidence in us and our leadership in this congregation. So thank you for saying yay to the continuation of our terms. It would be a little difficult if you didn't. <laughs> so we're really happy that you did. Um, we look to a future of continued expansion in our connections with one another, continued expansion in our capacities to live consistent with our principles and with our covenant with one another, and continued expansion in our stand for love and justice in the larger world. We have moved into a time of stability. We have a minister who is a joy to have both as a minister and an executive. We are free of debt. We have a balanced budget. We have increased rental of our space and greater numbers of people coming through here. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hi, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have a turn later. <laughs> okay. And we have concentrated on people and programs and can say wonderful things about the progress that we've made and the things that we've produced in those areas. And we have a building that's beginning to show its age. We're going to need to be able to take care of that. Stability is comforting, but can lull us into a reluctance to take risks, can take us kind of keeping the same old, same old. But it's time to move out again. This congregation, from the time of the groundbreaking for, this, for the original building to the current moment, we have always done well when we have stretched ourselves out and have taken on risks and have taken on new things. And it's going to be time once again for us to do that. I'm confident that we will continue to succeed in our endeavors. We are devoting the better part of our meeting today to a consideration of the future. Before we do that, I want to acknowledge some people. It is through the combined service of our staff and our volunteers that we have become who we are. I want first of all to, to acknowledge the staff members who may be present here today. If you would stand please, I'd like to um, let... Kathy, you may be... Oh, okay. The staff really forms the backbone of our organization. They're the ones who get all the things done in the office, who provide the music for us, who determine uh, some of the future, along with the board, some of the future directions that we go. But they are the ones that we count on. We call them when we need something. I've called a number of times in the last week to say, do we have this? Do we have that? <laughs> And this morning, I asked Jim if we had the covenant to put on the wall, and he said, I think so, but I'll find it. <laughs> and the staff has been very, very cooperative with the congregation, and I thoroughly appreciate that. 
I also have a deep appreciation for the people who give of their time to serve this congregation. We would not be the community we are if we did not have so many people volunteering their time. We have those who do so in a very public way and those who I might call the stealth volunteers, the ones who do things that we never really notice, but we would notice if they weren't there. The people who serve us coffee, the people who wash the tablecloths from Sunday, the people who teach RE, the people who go into the community and plant trees, who wash laundry, who come in here and spend the night or do any of a number of other jobs for SOS, in too many capacities for me to mention. The people in the choir whose ministry this morning was done in such a beautiful, beautiful way. I'd, I'd like to give a special acknowledgement to the choir because <laughs> it is their music and their ministry that carries a, a good deal of the emotion of our spirituality in this organization. Um, I also would like to thank every person who has given any of their time in service of this community, of the growing and developing of the community, the sustaining of the community. And I would ask you, I can't, I, I would surely leave something out if I tried to name all of them, so I'm not going to do that. But I'd like to ask you, if you have volunteered at all, in any capacity, to please stand so that we can recognize you. <laughs> You know, I think that's why we're so wonderful. <laughs> it's because so many people care so deeply and donate their diverse talents to this organization. Okay, let me now introduce our senior minister, the Reverend Dr. Kathy Hurt, for the minister's report. When I was wandering around during the rummage week that recently completed, uh, somebody shared a comment with me that they had heard from someone who had been a member here of this congregation, has relocated, but she makes it a point to come back as much as she can during rummage time. And so she just intersects with us now during that week and said this returnee said, it seems a lot lighter here. At first, it was assumed she was talking about the quantity of stuff donated for rummage <laughs> or the number of workers present that day. But no, that wasn't what she was referring to. She was referring to a mood, an ambiance, a tone. And that seems uh, to, uh, to match my experience with you over these last four years, that our movement has been towards a greater lightness, lightness of spirit, lightness in terms of transparency and the way we work, and just a lightness in terms of the hopes we carry for ourselves. It's my privilege to be your minister each day, each hour. Thank you. Let me introduce Dick Cantley, our treasurer, who will give us the treasurer's report now. Thanks, Lisa. Um, this is a, a little bit of an awkward one. It's an interim treasurer's report. And if you'd go ahead to the first slide, or the next slide, Jim. Um, just to give context, we'll do a little bit of a look back on 2013. We entered 2013 with $123,000, if you will, in our checking and savings accounts of cash on hand. And our budgeted expenditures for 2013 were $846,000. Our pledges, as, as you'll recall, were far short of what we needed to, to meet that budget. Budget. And the board decided to spend, in order to support the programs of this church, decided to spend from our cash surplus uh, to maintain those programs and build on them. That budgeted deficit was the entire $123,000 that we had in, in the checking and savings accounts. 
Um, the actions to manage that deficit fall into two broad areas. First of all, Dr. Hurt and her staff minimized the shortfall through expense management and uh, we had a nice increase in our rentals. And secondly, the congregation as a whole added to income through the fundraising efforts like rummage and talent and services auction script. And I'm going to forget a number of those, but there are lots of ways around the church that we raise additional funds. And so that deficit by the end of December got managed down to a total of $39,000. It's still a deficit and not something that we can continue to do, but it was, an, it was nice work on, on the part of uh, the staff and the congregation to manage it down to that. Um, we had a couple of extraordinary financial events. Uh, we had a, a very nice bequest from the Hodes family, and between that $60,000 bequest and, the, and taking $14,000 uh, out of the checking account, we paid off the congregational or the loan against um, the endowment fund. On the negative side, we had a flood that cost $18,000, and some congregants, uh, uh, good congregants, stepped up and def and. Uh, uh, came up with 9,000 towards uh, that. And I didn't put this up, but you should know that our endowments, which are important, they're, they're things that we don't use, they're monies that we don't use for day-to-day -day operations, but our endowments uh, increased because of the HOTUS uh, uh, bequest and the payback and the additional earnings because it was a good year in the markets. Our endowments increased $157,000 to a total of 533000 And that's important because 5% of that that amount goes to the continuing operations of the church. Our 2014-2015 budget, we had cash on hand going in of 89000 Our budget is balanced this year at $808,000, and that's a 12-month basis. It's half again that much for the, for the full fiscal year. Uh, our budget of pledge income is $504,000, and uh, we want to thank Keith and Mary Ensroth for their leadership uh, on the committee to, uh, on the, um, what do we call that committee? <laughs> Stewardship. <laughs> it's, it's right here on my badge. <laughs> For their leadership and stewardship, because that was uh, we increased between 10 and 11, 000, uh, 10 and 11 percent, and that's the best uh, increase we've had in many, many years. Uh, it still got us to sort of a maintain plus or a thrive minus uh, amount. <laughs> And so we fell about $36,000 short of, of our goal. And the way that that was managed, because we were determined to be balanced, was about half of it came out of uh, the, uh, the operating budget, and the other half came out of, um, we did not at this point, or have not at this point, uh, contributed dues to the UUA. Um, you'll be receiving some information in your next statement from BUC about that, and we're going to ask those congregants who are able to to make their share of, uh, of a contribution toward the UUA, and perhaps uh, if, if you are able to, uh, if you've got the resources, perhaps uh, uh, fund uh, for some congregants who are not able to do that. It's important uh, that we maintain our membership with UUA because uh, for example, the upcoming capital campaign, they can be a great resource for us. And uh, if we should ever want to find another minister, we, we're going to need their help. So um, that pretty well wraps it up for the treasurer's report. Are there any, any questions at this point? Great. Would the members of the Campus Development and Prioritization Committee please come forward? We have chairs for you up here. I'd like to introduce these people to you individually. They're important people in the congregation and you may not know some of them. So, Inta Davis is on the end. 
Jim Clark, Steve Laurie, Pam Graham, Sharon Kirchner, <laughs> you've already met Dick, Karen Stanky, and you've already met Craig Straub and Jim Shettle. And these are the people who have been working very hard for the last number of months to pull together all of the information that they'll be presenting to you today. They've been meeting regularly since June and intensively for several months. I mean like weekly or more often. And they've been gathering, sorting, organizing, and prioritizing what you say you want for the future of BUC. So in a moment, I'll, they'll tell you about their process and their results. I'd like to offer an analogy that pulls everything together, though. So how many of you have ever remodeled, repaired, or upgraded part or all of your home, added on to your home, or wished that you could make changes to your living space that would make it more gracious, functional, and attractive? All of you who have done that, please raise your hands. Okay, good. So, um, and how many of you have noticed the difference it has made to do those things? Yeah. Okay. Well, BUC, your spiritual church home, is calling for your loving attention in that kind of regard. The work that the CDPC will be talking about <coughs> excuse me, comes from an overall and very thoughtful look at our facility and its adequacy to support our programs and activities into the future. Without further ado, here is Dick Cantley to begin this process. Okay, as you can see by the name of the committee, we've had two focuses. Um, part of the group, Pam Graham, Sharon Kirchner, and Craig Stroop have been focused primarily on the prioritization of the various projects and needs. And Steve Laurie, Karen Stanky, Jim Shettle, Inta Davis, and Jim Clark have been primarily focused on the, the, the nuts and bolts of it, if you will, of the, of the building pro, uh, process that we're going to be going hopefully through. Uh, when we say what we can be from a facility standpoint, those are just bricks and mortar and grass and trees, but what it really is about is um, from a facility standpoint, from a campus standpoint, how can we do better in support of our programs, our growth, and our overall experience here at BUC. So that's really what it's all about, not just the, not the bricks and mortar so much. So Karen Stanky is going to talk with you about the objectives that we had set for ourselves. Pam Graham is going to give you some insight into the process uh, that we've gone through and the inputs and, and how we got the inputs. Uh, Steve Laurie is going to talk a little bit about the assessment of how our current space is utilized and uh, how we've created basic concepts for each project. Uh, and then Sharon Kirchner is going to talk about that, uh, uh, the criteria that we use to evaluate the projects. And then I'll come back up and give you what the next steps will be. So with that. As Dick said, although the projects submitted were bricks and mortars types of things, the committee's objectives were more about affirming our UU values and how these physical changes that were proposed could assist us in furthering our principles and expanding our programs. So our main objectives, objectives were to create a welcoming, safe, uh, basically grounds and entryway, that's not the exclusive extent of that welcome and safe. Uh, we wanted to enhance and make enhancements to the RE program, enhance the music program, create a space for meditation, create a greener campus, that's why I'm on the committee, um, reduce utility costs, improve our accessibility for handicapped people, and to increase rental income, which will help our bottom line. Yes. So it, it's fitting that they would ask me to come up and talk about the process because as the engineer on the committee, I beat 
beat them over the head that we can't get from an input of many excellent ideas to a focused list of a direction without a process and still be friends with each other and with all of you. Um, and so uh, we, we got there and we have spreadsheets to show for it. <laughs> um, <laughs> next slide, please. So this talks about the many excellent, heartfelt, important ideas that come from all over the church and the ideas that we were soliciting on how we should improve. Um, there are a lot of deferred repairs, um, things that have fallen apart in the church that need to be fixed. We have a new preschool that needs some attention and security and safety were on the top of their list. The music program would like uh, better practice rooms and who could disappoint them after a service like today. Um, the RE classrooms, uh, the RE needs classrooms for their programming, classrooms that uh, have maybe a floor that was uh, newer than, than some of us. <laughs> the, the, um, <laughs> There's a request for worship. How we, can we have, a, for example, a chapel for in intimate worship? And when Dick went through the treasurer's reports, we learned how important rental income is to, the, is to the church, but probably not a lot of those renters are coming because they think it's really beautiful here, but more that it's meeting their needs. Finally, we have a church-wide appeal. There were a lot of people saying we need storage, storage, storage. These are all really important ideas, and it would be good to address them all, but it would also be a little wrong to do them all, because if you remember Karen, she's supporting, uh, and, and all of us, the environmental, and everybody having their own private space that only gets used about four hours a week doesn't move us towards um, an environmental space that um, lowers our utility bills. And so it's this process that tells us how, that guides us on taking many, many ideas and putting them in order that makes sense and we can share with you. And thank you for the spreadsheets, Pam. <laughs> um, Pam just gave us an overview of the whole process. Um, and after the initial feedback, we looked at a few more things. Uh, we gathered material that had already been generated by a lot of the other committees. We looked at occupancy rates for spaces, uh, when they were used as rentals. We looked outside and inside at the existing building and the grounds to gauge their current condition. And you know, in the patterns we walk uh, in and out of the building every Sunday, uh, sometimes things might escape our attention. So we tried to look at all spaces with fresh eyes, brainstorming possible improvements from the superficial ones like wall finishes, furniture, uh, to the more profound ones. What must be repaired? Can it be repaired even? Or does it need to be replaced? Um, as one example, ah yes, the, the commons. Uh, this photo is just one reminder of uh, the corridor that connects to the commons. Uh, it's in very poor condition. You might not encounter it every time you come into the, to the building. Um, and sometimes conclusions just kind of jump off the page at you. Uh, this particular area can't just simply be repaired. It really needs a, a full replacement. Uh, last, we started to consider opportunities for growth. If our existing spaces are not sufficient to meet our goals, where would the most logical opportunities for growth be? Excellent. And for the next step, uh, we continued to dig deeper. Uh, we looked at details of previous proposals that had already been provided for the church. Uh, you might remember a conceptual site design that the church obtained a few years ago. Uh, we've also had several proposals for energy improvements from vendors uh, that have been gathered over the, first, over the last several years. So you realize that some of the suggested improvements we're looking at now have really been in the formative stages for a few years now. And in some areas, uh, we came to a realization that there was a limit to what we could conclude or direct. Some of the suggestions for improvements overlapped. Uh, one good example, the main entry. Uh, we all know that the skylight is failing. Uh, we know that the restroom is in need of renovation. More informal seating would be a real plus. 
The conference rooms are a little formal, one is a little small, and they're both in heavy use. So this led us to the idea that a more substantial renovation of the entire entry might be the most efficient solution. Now that's just one short example. In all, we came up with an itemized list of over 40 projects, large and small, that all merit consideration. So uh, next, Sharon is going to wrap up uh, the review process for us. Oh boy. We had 40 projects with many subcategories on some of them. And we had this really big database, thank you Pam, uh, that kind of kept us on track and helped us put things together. So we had these criteria. We looked at each of the projects individually and asked, did it, add, did it advance our UU principles? Well, of course it did. They were, in, they were submitted by UUs. What else would they do? Um, so we really looked at how many of those principles does the project support? And the more, that's, the more principles that were supported, the higher the number given for the priority. And then we looked at the space. How many different ways could this space be used? And again, the more different ways it could be used, the higher the priority was given to it. Last one we looked at, does it produce our growth? Does it produce income? Or does it produce some savings? Using that same pattern, the more of those items each individual space supported, the higher the priority it was given. So then, we looked at all of this, and it sort of kind of organized itself into these general priority categories. First was, of course, the most urgent ones, those things that are structural and safety oriented that we've put off till we have to do them now. I mean, it is crunch time. We've got to do these items. Then we could look at the more essential things that were like more basic repairs and refurbishments that we really need to do to, to maintain what we have now. Just simply maintain it. No enhancing, just fix it. Then we looked at those things that enhance our UU campus. And those are things that we really ought to do that will help us improve programming. Once we got that done, we got into the fun part, which was those things that are the ideal, that are going to help us thrive and grow and be the best that we can be. So next steps. I wish we could. I wish we could come to you with a fait accompli, but it doesn't work that way. Um, we're going to be two, doing two things over the course of the summer. We're going to select and work with an architect, and there's a group formed uh, to uh, to make that happen. And in addition, select and work with a capital campaign consultant uh, to s assess what we might be able to fund. And it really is a chicken and egg thing. We could go and do an elaborate plan that might have no hope of being funded or you know we can't really come to you uh, and say how much would you fund unless you have some kind of a plan so we're going to take a baby step first and have those two consultants work in concert and come back to you this fall we're going to be working on it through the summer uh, we're going to be coming back to you this fall Greg Bloomfield will be uh, heading up uh, the group that's going to be working with a campaign consultant, capital campaign consultant, and a group of architects uh, from here in the congregation are going to be work working on uh, selecting an architect. And we'll do this chicken and egg thing with how much we might raise, what can we do, how far we can we go, and so on and so forth until we get to a real plan, which we will bring to you in the fall. Any questions or comments or thoughts at this point? Keith. Uh, is, there, is there the urgent drive and set of the list? Is that available? It is. Uh, we'll put it on the website. Um, very quickly, the urgent are the connection to the commons, the main entryway and the leaking skylights, sidewalk repair, elevator repair and replace. Well, the elevator we took care of. Uh, 
<laughs> the essential things are refurbishing classroom interiors, improving site drainage, the parking lot resurfacing and lighting, uh, the remote access uh, for security and temperature control, redesign front foyer to be more welcoming and add technology, softscaping at the main entrance, including including exterior signage, renovating bathrooms, refurbishing the commons, and uh, some HVAC work in the red door room. The enhance and grow programs are blue door room expansion, conversion, conversion potentially of that to a music room, green and red door renovations, sharing entrance in a bathroom potentially, uh, ground source heating, uh, the heat pump for the social hall providing air conditioning and heating, improving accessibility of the grounds and trail, our grounds and trail, uh, potentially some heat exchangers, repurposing RE offices to meeting rooms, a social hall sound system, uh, and uh, work in the commons on bathroom uh, refurb and furnishings and creating storage space in the lower level. The Thrive items would be enclosing the area potentially between the office and commons for a chapel for intimate events, um, hardscaping for Woodward and the Lone Pine entrances, re relocating the band platform, updating and beautifying the Marshall Courtyard, updating the current social hall uh, further, to a further extent, and the Memorial Glen sculpture. So I'm sorry to run such a fast list by everybody, but again, the chicken and, chicken and egg thing, as we, as we march towards this next fall, will be able to be much, much more definitive about uh, what, what the extent of the projects might be. Grace? Will the information that you've done today, as well as what you just quickly went through, and will that be available to people who aren't here? Yes. And when? We'll, we'll put it on the website. This com we can do that this coming week, I'm okay, sure. Okay, great. Thanks. And it's being videotaped. <laughs> yes. I'd just like to thank the committee for all their hard work. No. <laughs> Pretty good. I'm sorry that was not in Pam's spreadsheet. <laughs> so. Anything else? Anna. I'm sorry, Anna. Yes. Yes, I didn't hear any mention of the solar panels for the roof of the uh, social hall. Why was that not on there? Because because I didn't list it. They are they are the solar panels are um, are part of the uh, are part of the potential program. It's under Thrive, yeah. That's an overarching thing. Uh, the, wherever we can save energy, I'm a little bit of a skeptic on some of these things because of the dollars and cents. That's got to make sense too. Uh, but uh, there, there have been a lot of strides in solar and uh, it looks like ground source heating makes sense and so on and so forth. So all of those things uh, will be very much considered in the total program. But we have limited resources and there's going to be this tug and pull. Any others? Thank you much. Okay, at this point in the meeting, are there any other issues arising for the benefit of the congregation? We have people who can bring you microphones if you have anything to ask, say, suggest, etc. Grace? At our last meeting, and it's listed on the back page, I suggested that there become a group formed to look at the overall interior, just decor. Not permanent things, but other things in general, like flower arrangements and pe things piled up places that detract from the beauty of this congregation. I'd like to offer that again as something that would help. We're looking short term with this. What this group has done is look long term. 
and I would like us not to have things piled around in corners so that our beautiful building isn't seen as well. But would, there would have to be a group formed to do that because there is not at this point. Thank you, Grace. Annis. Yeah, I'm very concerned about the cutbacks in, in staff hours and in some cases benefits. And I was wondering if our improved situation in 2014 over 2013 was going to permit us to restore any of those. Dick, do you want to speak to that? Uh, the answer is partly. Uh, the, uh, we were able to get within UUA guidelines for the um, retirement benefits for the employees, which was not something we had previously done. And we were able to maintain our minister's um, uh, retirement benefits, uh, which was not at all certain, and give her uh, a very small raise that's the first one in four years. So. I was wondering about the other positions that have been cut back in hours. That I can't address. That's an executive question, I guess. Annis, I'm sorry to tell you the, uh, those cuts remain. Uh, the and at such at such time as the funding is present and that it also seems in the best interest of what we're trying to do here to restore that then we'll do that but it needs to meet both those criteria both not just that we can pay for it but that it's the best use of our resources to do it that way Other issues? Okay, thank you for being here today. Do I hear a motion for adjournment? Pick one, Marilyn. There was three or four. <laughs> there were three or four. Second to that motion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Okay, this meeting is now adjourned. Thank you for being here again.